fiscal policy suffers from the same lags as monetary policy. Those are, one, the recognition lag. For both monetary and fiscal policy, this lag is pretty similar, and dependent upon how long it takes useful economic data to be collected. The second one is the implementation lag. This lag is much longer for fiscal policy, as the mechanism for implementation is almost always the budget, which is susceptible directly to political pressures. Elected officials are always thinking about whether a decision will impact their next election. The final, third and final lag is impact lag. If fiscal policy has any advantage, it might be with impact lag. Since fiscal decisions are made by elected officials through the budget, its mechanism for impacting the economy is more direct. If policymakers want more expansionary economic activity, as opposed to cutting interest rates and then hoping people borrow more money to spend, the federal government could literally start building bridges and dams like they did under FDR's New Deal programs, or highways like they did under Eisenhower during the Cold War. Still, there will always be a lag between a policy's enactment and its impact on output. Fiscal policy actions can also crowd out activity from the private sector, especially if those actions are financed with borrowed dollars. Since both the government and private investors are borrowing from the same pool of saved funds, the more the government borrows, especially since they issue the safest assets, the more those common funds get depleted and the more expensive in the form of higher interest rates it becomes for private investors to borrow. Evidence suggests this crowding out can be offset though, even as the government spends at a deficit by focusing spending on complementary goods. So borrowing funds to build infrastructure that makes doing business faster and safer and makes it easier for workers to get to their work sites is less likely to have a crowding out effect and more likely to cause what we call crowding in. In contrast, borrowing to finance a tax cut aimed at the wealthy and high income earners may do little to create incentives for businesses to invest or opportunities for people to actually earn more. This brings up though the question of which side of the aggregate supply and aggregate demand model fiscal policy should impact. Demand side policies like jobs programs and cash stimulus have more evidence of positively impacting the macro economy than supply side, sometimes called trickle down policies like corporate tax cuts. Regardless of evidence, though, fiscal policy is inherently political. So normative arguments about how big government should be or who should bear the burden of tax liabilities always hovers in the backdrop.